Welcome to the Young Crones Cafe, where you can get a magic brew full of all sorts of information, both witchy and practical. Grab a cup of coffee and join us. I'm Elizabeth, a wordsmith. And I'm Dave, a modern day sage. We are going to talk about various witchcraft and life topics from a slightly more mature perspective, at least most of the time. Thanks for joining us. Here's a little something from the Young Crones Cafe to get you through until our next regularly scheduled episode. Daylight saving time has ended. Unless you live in Hawaii or Arizona where they don't observe the switch forward and the, the spring forward is a better expression and fall back that we do every year, which creates daylight saving time and more light in the evenings. I find it interesting that we have now switched back to what they call standard time, which actually seems to fit better with the <clears throat> progression into the dark times of the year that we as witches are aware of. And if you're connected to the energies of this time and the seasons changing and all the other stuff, the energies that you work with, you may have more difficulty adjusting when they change the clocks because it doesn't fit the natural energies of the earth around us that we are aware of. So I'm going to go on a mild rant about <laughs> the lack of need for daylight saving time anymore. Most kids don't know that. Uh, God is kind of boring in church. <laughs> but um, I would like to, them to know that they can have fun with God and that God is joyful. He's not judging He's joyful and he loves them. I mean, daylight saving time is actually the process of moving clocks forward by one hour during summer months. So daylights last longer into the evening. Um, most of North America and Europe do this, but the rest of the world doesn't. And this practice has been controversial from ever since it started. And maybe the reasons for daylight saving time initially have changed and aren't necessary anymore. The modern idea of changing the clocks with the seasons can be tracked back to at least to the late 19th century when a New Zealand entomologist proposed it, his name was George Hudson, to conserve energy and extend those summer daylight hours, you know, something which would have benefited a lot of people because they could do more stuff after work i.e. spend money and increase the economy. Um, it actually got its official start during World War I when people were trying to find ways to conserve fuel. And actually Germany was the first country to adopt the daylight saving time and then the United States did it a couple of years later. It took a long time for us to get it together where it was finally standardized, for want of a better word, in 1966 when they passed the Congress as the Uniform Time Act, which allowed states not to practice it, but they couldn't stay on daylight savings time permanently either. The common myth is that the U.S. adopted daylight saving time to benefit farmers during World War I in order to give them time to do farm work and work in the munitions factories as well. Um, there's actually, it's been proven there has been little or more savings in energy according to the Congressional Research Service. So the guys, people, would be nice, who passed the law in the first place did not get the benefit that they thought they might from this practice. And they still work to this day Every once in a while, Bill comes up in the House or the Senate to adopt daylight savings time permanently. Um, however, they have pointed to studies that they have found adverse health effects linked to daylight savings time itself, such as an increase in fatal traffic accidents, heart attacks, strokes, and sleep deprivation, which this witch is currently suffering from, because it takes me about two weeks to adjust to the fact that seven o'clock is now six o'clock and so on and so forth and it kind of throws off my entire schedule i'm not hungry when i should be i'm not tired when i should be and it slowly has a draining effect on me 
so that mentally I'm not as sharp as I want to be, and I know better than to practice magic until I get my shit together. And daylight savings time is not ending anytime soon. So next March will be springing forward again. You know, and and many Americans are already sleep deprived. We, as a country, we tend not to get enough sleep because it's recommended that we get at least six hours and eight is probably better for us. But with our crazy schedules now, most people don't do that. You know, and the idea that falling back might actually be easier on us because we supposedly gain an extra hour. However, this chronic sleep deprivation can increase levels of stress hormones that boost heart rate and blood pressure and chemicals that increase inflammation. So if you have arthritis, you may have a few extra aches and pains when things are going around. These changes are happening. You know, you need to be feeling, if you're feeling drowsy, you may need to consider that maybe now is not the best time to plan to drive anywhere in the evening. However, as a witch, there's a few things we can do to prepare ourselves next time. It's almost like we've created a country full of jet lag for a day or two. And if you're a witch like me, it may last for a week or two. So I am already thinking and preparing, as it were, for when we spring forward. I'm going to try to reset myself for that hour forward for a couple of weeks before it happens, because we know when it's going to happen by moving my schedule off like 10 minutes at a time so that I'll be prepared. Of course, I say this every year and I don't necessarily do it. However, at this time of when things are on quote unquote standard time, we're actually more in touch with the correct or I don't know how to say it, the actual energies around us. So take advantage of this by sitting down and sensing the energy, however you do, if you have a minute, just to see how it feels and see if you have better connections there. In the meantime, I am working at resetting my schedule while bitterly complaining about the fact that I am tired, I'm grouchy, and I'm going to be that way for a week or so. And I have to smile when I say that because it means I really am a practicing witch and it's a gentle reminder that I do have those connections to the energies. So with that being said, because when I'm recording this, it's early in the morning and I just sent a kid out into the dark to catch a bus to school. And by the time he gets out of his after school crap, it'll be dark when he gets home and he won't even see daylight today except through the windows of a building. I guess I'm going to go outside later, regardless of the weather, and take a minute to sense the energies and remember that the effects of the change in time that seem to be greater for a witch, and it may be for you, so this may be some, something to think about, is what happens when the world around us throws off the clocks, which are not the best way to connect to the energies anyway, because they don't run on our time. So with that being said, until next time, may you find mirth and reverence in all things. And remember, if you need to slow down for a few minutes, take a nap, take a rest, eat something. If you're actually hungry at the time, it doesn't match the clocks. And just take care of yourself. Well, it looks like the coffee cups are empty for this week. We hope you join us again next Tuesday. But you can find us at our website, twoyoungcrones.com. That's the number two, Young Crones. We'd love to have you join our growing online Discord community. Check out our new Patreon presence. Just look for Young Crones Cafe. Through Patreon, you'll be able to make it to our Discord. We are also Young Crones Cafe on Twitter and Facebook. Until then, remember... We are witches who work with energies to affect change. We are believers in both imminent and transcendent divine. We are celebrants of the passage of the solar and lunar cycles. We are hedge walkers who pass back and forth between the worlds of the magical and the mundane. We are seekers of knowledge. And we are walkers of a spiritual tradition we call the path. So mote it be. So mote it be.